Okay, well, let's take a look at the statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flow. The statement of cash flows is the third of the major financial reporting statements, including the balance sheet and the income statement. The statement of cash flows is going to uh, indicate how our cash has increased and decreased throughout the year. So when I look at the statement of cash flows, I typically like to go in reverse order. If you look at the balance sheet, on the balance sheet you have a beginning and ending balance of cash. And that's going to be the very last thing that we see on our statement of cash flows. So we have our beginning cash of some value. And we have our ending cash of some value. And the difference between the two is our change here. So if you consider beginning cash A, ending cash B, then the change of cash is B minus A. So the whole purpose of the statement of cash flows is to see how that cash balance has changed. There are three major areas that we're going to look at. The first one, well I guess the last one in this case, is going to be our financing. So cash flows from financing. Okay, if you think about financing, financing is when we take out money from the bank. So our cash increases, cash goes up, when we borrow money from a bank or another company. And this would typically be in the form of some sort of note that we have, so a note payable, a liability that we take. Our cash decreases when we pay off those loans. So when we make payments on those notes, or we pay them off when they mature. Before financing, we have our, before financing, we have our cash flows, which will be used for or provided from, um, and when we talk about investing activities, investing activities are typically where we take money and we invest it into other uh, goods, usually fixed assets like land building and equipment. So our cash will go down when we purchase fixed assets or we construct uh, buildings or buy equipment and things like that. And when we sell those, so when we build the buildings, cash goes out. When we sell those buildings, our cash will increase with the amount of money that we're able to collect. We also sometimes get investments by purchasing stock in other companies. So if we buy stock from other companies, our cash goes down. When we sell that stock, our cash goes up. Finally, the first section we have is our cash flows from operations. And the cash flow from operations is cash that we bring in, that we collect, and that we use during the normal course of our business. So typically speaking, we receive cash, cash will go up, when customers pay us the money that they owe us from their accounts receivable. Cash will go down when we pay off any payables or liabilities that we have to other companies. Those IOUs, which were for uh, inventory, or expenses throughout the normal course of operations. So cash comes in when we collect it from customers, cash goes out when we pay it off, um, pay off our uh, creditors. So these are the three main sections, cash flow from operations, cash flows from investing, and cash flows from financing. The statement of cash flows is presented in two different formats. You have one that is called the direct method and one that's called the indirect method. Now the indirect method, the indirect method is easier for accountants, easy for accountants to prepare, but it's difficult for investors to interpret. And the reason why is because the indirect method is going to focus on just the changes in our accounts. So the first thing that we start with is we look at net income. And if you recall, net income is all of our revenues minus expenses. Now this is really important because our revenues and expenses under accrual accounting aren't always going to be the exact amount of cash that we are collecting or the cash that we are paying. So there's going to be some difference in the actual amount of cash that went out for those particular items. Another important thing with the indirect method is we have to add back our non-cash transactions, which typically includes depreciation. Because depreciation doesn't reduce our cash, is recorded as an expense, we want to add it back in to only look at the accounts that had some effect in cash. So we start with our net income, we add back our depreciation. Then, 
In order to view the differences in cash flows, we're going to focus on our operating assets and liabilities. And more specifically, we're looking at the changes in these accounts. So you have to think about the differences in these accounts. When we collect cash from customers for sales, that typically is tied to our accounts receivable. So if we have an accounts receivable account, we have an accounts receivable account that increases during the year, so the accounts receivable is going up, that means that fewer people are paying off their accounts, which means we're receiving less cash. So an increase in an asset, such as accounts receivable, is going to decrease our cash flows. If we have a reduction in an asset, say for inventory, so if our total inventory from the beginning of the year goes down, then that means that we have sold more inventory and that we've collected additional cash for that inventory. So that will have an increase in our cash flows. So really important with our assets, if we have an increase in an asset, then the cash flows will go down. And if we have a decrease in asset, then our cash flows will go up. So they move in opposite directions. Then we look at our operating liabilities. So we have accounts payable, which is how much uh, we owe our suppliers, people who provide us inventory that we buy on account. If our accounts payable goes up, that means that we have not paid as much cash for that particular inventory, meaning we haven't paid off our bills. So from the beginning of the year, if the accounts payable goes up through the year, then we are taking more credit and we are holding on to more cash. So an increase in a liability will increase our cash flows. Whereas if we pay off something like an expense payable, things like salaries payable or so forth, if those go down, that means that we've reduced our liabilities and we have reduced our cash because we paid cash in order to reduce those liabilities. So that will have a negative effect on our cash flows. So with our liabilities, an increase in a liability will have an increase in cash flow because we're holding on to that on account instead of paying it off. And a decrease in liabilities will have a decrease in cash flow. So you're going to go through all of your operating assets and liabilities in order to capture those. We'll also include things like income taxes payable and any payables that we have associated with our operating uh, assets. So the total difference here, net income plus depreciation plus any decrease in assets minus any increase in assets plus any increase in liabilities minus any decrease in liabilities is going to give us our total cash flow from operations. And sometimes they call it provided by operations. Incidentally, healthy companies, we typically want to see an increase in our cash flows from operations. Whereas our investing, we typically want to see a decrease where companies are providing cash, allocating cash to buy more assets that will hopefully help generate more revenue in the future. With our financing accounts, we may see a plus or a minus depending on whether we need to borrow cash or whether we're paying off our obligations to the bank or um, to our shareholders. So the indirect method, easy for accountants, difficult for investors. It's hard for investors to look at these changes in accounts and really see what's going on. This is why the SEC prefers the direct method. And the direct method is easy for investors, but it's difficult for accountants to prepare. And the reason why is we focus on more general accounts. So for example, the direct method ignores net income and depreciation in all these accounts. What it looks at is it looks at cash collected from customers, and that should be an increase. Then we have cash paid to suppliers, which should be, which should be a decrease That's for expenses, which will also have a decrease. Now the key element is that the cash provided by operations is going to be the same for the indirect and the direct method. So these two values are both going to match. Okay, okay. so let's look at this cash collected from customers, cash paid for supply. In order to get cash collected from customers, we have to look at the changes in our accounts receivable. So if you think about how the accounts receivable works, you have a beginning balance, and it's a debit because it's an asset. And you have the ending balance, 
And both of these are given on the balance sheet. So if you think about how accounts receivable works, we take the beginning balance plus credit sales minus cash collected from customers. So credit sales So the value we want to solve for is this cash collected. We find the beginning balance on the balance sheet. We find credit sales as our revenue on the income statement. And our ending balance is also going to be on the balance sheet. So we calculate for this. We fill in the missing value. For example, if our beginning balance in accounts receivable was 150 and our ending balance in accounts receivable was 170, and we had credit sales of 1250 we would need to figure out how much of that cash was collected. A nice shortcut would be, of these credit sales, the 1250 we are going to collect all of these minus the $20 difference in accounts receivable. Since accounts receivable went up, we collected $20 less cash. So the total cash collected is $1,230. So 150 plus 1250 is going to be 1400 minus 1230 will give us 170 for our total value. Next we look at cash payments to suppliers. And this one's a little bit complicated because you have to look at two different accounts. You have to look at the change in inventory and then you have to look at the change in accounts payable. So first thing, let's start with our accounts payable because that's what we're really trying to find. So our accounts payable begins with a credit balance, it's a liability, and we have our ending balance. Now accounts payable increases when we make purchases on account. And it decreases when we pay cash. So this is the value that we're looking for for this cash payments to suppliers. But we don't know what this pay but we don't know what this amount for purchases is at this point. So this is where we go back and we're going to look at our inventory account. If you remember from Intro to Financial Accounting, you have your beginning balance in inventory, you have your ending, inventory increases with purchases, and decreases with cost of goods sold. So we have cost of goods sold from our income statement. We can plug these values in to figure out purchases which we then plug into our accounts payable in order to get our cash payments to suppliers. So let's say inventory. Inventory started with 200 and inventory ended with 180. Cost of goods sold, which we got from our income statement, was 2000. So here we have the 200. We have cost of sales, which were 2000. So our purchases are going to be $20 less than that. So we end up with 1980 for this value. And you can calculate this. 200 plus 1980 gives us 2180 minus 2000 gives us 180 for our ending balance. We plug this number for purchases into our accounts payable, 1980. Let's say our accounts payable balance started with 20 and the ending balance was, um, let's say, 75. So our beginning balance was 20 plus purchases, 1980 gives us total accounts payable of 2000. Our ending balance was 75, so 2000 minus the 75 is going to give us 1925, and that is the cash payment to suppliers. So with all of our additional expense accounts, we're going to look at the payables and find the change in the payable based on the adjustments. We'll take one more look at this. So cash paid for expense. Now these, expenses now, these expenses typically have payables assigned to them. So we'll look at um, salaries payable. Okay, so salaries payable starts with the credit balance. And we have the ending balance, which we got from the balance sheet. And here, salaries payable increases when we incur expenses. So we incur expense, which we get from our income statement. 
and salaries payable decreases when we pay off that liability. So this is the value that we're looking for. We want to find out how much we're decreasing our life. So let's say we have a salaries payable that begins with 10, it ends with 15. We incur expenses of 250, and now we need to figure out what the payment is. So our beginning liability plus our incurred expenses now gives us 260. If we subtract the 15, we're going to end up with 245 as the amount of cash that we paid for those uh, liabilities. The, la the last account that you have to look for is when you have prepaid expenses. So if I have a prepaid expense, it basically just moves in the opposite direction, right? Because prepaid expenses are essentially assets. So we have an asset with a beginning balance. We have an ending balance here. And when we expense something, the expense will reduce our prepaid asset. And the cash will increase our prepaid asset. So when you pay cash in advance, the cash payment is going to decrease. So we're looking for this value. So it's a little bit different than the other ways that we calculate things. Okay, so let's say we have a prepaid expense of 200. We have additional, well, we don't know what the additional purchase are. So we have 200 at the beginning. So we have prepaid expense of 200 at the beginning. At the end, we have a prepaid expense of 50. During the period, we have total expenses of 450. So that 450 of expense is going to include this prepayment amount plus any extra cash that we have here. So the 200 plus something minus 450 is going to give us 50. Or in other words, 50 plus 450 is 500, which means that minus the beginning balance of 200 gives us cash for prepaid expenses of 300. So 500 minus 450 gives us an ending balance of 50. So the circled values for the cash paid for prepaid expense, for the salaries payable, for the cash collected, and the cash paid suppliers are all going to appear on the statement of cash flows. We are not going to include our purchases as a separate item because that is already built into the accounts payable.